Today I was working with my ESP device over here and I had a, a new error that I haven't had before so I want to document it for myself. I did a quick dive into um, the root cause and, and I got some progress so let me share it. This is my serial window for the Arduino um, while it's running and right here where it says attempting to connect to the MQTT broker on my last connection I got a, an error. It said error code 2 from the broker. So I dove in to find out what is um, what are the, the common uh, error codes. I found a reference. I found that um, error 2 is the connection is refused because the identifier is rejected. Um, there's probably a lot of reading to do about what that truly means but before I start to study, I, I looked for someone else with this issue. So someone else said um, they got the same error and they're not sure why. Someone else is responding, there's no client ID set. Now the way this library is supposed to work is um, the, the library called Arduino MQTT client is supposed to generate an automatic um, client ID for you when you're connecting to their broker, to to any broker, sorry. Um, and this seems to be fairly standard because if you go to the WebSocket client, you'll find um, that in this connection configuration, it says, uh, it says at some point that this client ID is automatically generated. And if you leave the page and come back, then there's a new one and it's fairly random. Um, so the client, uh, the broker just needs something there. And it also does not need a username and password. You can leave these blank. But today I'm adding some just to see if it solves my problem. So um, this Arduino f um, program, which I need to bring down here, this Arduino program is... Uh, derivative from a few examples that I've modified and added features to but at the root it's an example that comes from the Arduino MQTT client library so I wanted to find out uh, what's happening with the auto generation of client ID and I haven't looked closely at this part of the library before um, so today I did the um, MQ client this is a function I made but I copied and pasted these lines what happens is it says you can provide a unique client ID if not set the library uses at a f uh, Arduino dash millis which will um, bring you a fairly random number because it's going to be in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands it's uh, milliseconds since the boot and it's unlikely to repeat the same ID uh, very often um, because it's just hard to capture the same millisecond that you captured on another occasion. Anyway, so now I'm making my own client ID. To, this is going to be Scuttle ESP6011. I'm going to try to stay away from characters such as dots, spaces. Um, spaces probably wouldn't work anyway. But I'm going to try out this as my, um, my standard for now. If I hook up another ESP device in my uh, Scuttle environment, then I'll call it 6012. Um, and it says you can provide a username and password for authentic authentication. Um, also, this this is the part that's uh, not required. So um, I'm going to fill it out. I'm going to call myself Scuttle, Scuttle User 601, and I'm going to name my password the super generic uh, T E M P P W D, um, which I don't mind sharing at this point because I'm not doing anything. Uh, I need to maintain uh, control of or, or secrecy. Um, if I start to pass data that I'll use to control um, robots here, then if there's anything related to safety or privacy, then, then that's going to be uh, made into something non-generic. But we're going f right now from, from nothing to something. So um, now I went ahead and connected again, and uh, this time it, it connected just fine, as you can see here. And I began to publish the RSSI. Um, this is the, the signal strength of my 
of my Wi-Fi. And there's another curious note that I had to investigate later, but these numbers are always supposed to be negative. Now it's positive. I've all, I think I've never seen that before. So um, that's very strange. It's not. It's not correct that someone can transmit a signal and it, the the gain has increased by the time it reaches you <laughs> normally. So um, this is going to become the the standard recommendation until I get something that works more reliably. We we took a problem that may be fixable just by handling the library better. Um, for example, if we understood why the Arduino Millis usually works and it worked for a couple of years and, and now it doesn't, then we could maybe make a better direction, but for now this is this is the direction we'll go. And I'll put information like this after it's been tested a fair number of times I'll put that information into the Scuttle IoT guide where we're sharing our, our best practices that we found so far for IoT so um, the takeaways from this video could be for you if you're starting out um, that the uh, good library to work with ESP8266 and a few others is the Arduino MQTT client. Um, the capital letters makes a difference because there, uh, there are a couple similar ones with different uh, casing here. The example that I always use is under, uh, it's inside the library, Arduino MQTT client, Wi-Fi echo callback. And I choose this one because it uh, tests both outgoing and incoming or response to um, messages that are subscribed so I can test both of those and this doesn't work out of the box for me so I do some manipulation of this and I definitely change the broker um, you can follow along if you want to do the same um, style as me if you want it to be in the scuttle ecosystem you can go into the IOT guide and it has the information on that